Hey there, everybody. How's it going? Nico Scarlet Moon here, back with another Half Watcher series installment. And in this installment, I want to talk about what's coming up here for mid through the end of November, but in particular, the middle of November. We've got a very turbulent but stimulating month ahead of ourselves, and it's all about the clearing and dissolvement of stagnant structures. And for a lot of people who have been called to do the Path Watcher work, whether you feel that this definitely is a role that has awakened in you this year, for a lot of people that could be veteran gatekeepers and grid workers out there, or healers, light workers, light servers, you, this is a part four. We've, we've gone over it a few times. Or, or those of you who are just feeling called to take part in it, opening the light gateways, connecting to your higher heart, and getting access to further your own personal journey that way. Thank you so much for the work that you've done. I've been seeing so many pictures of gateways and things like that opening up all over the world. Aruba and Colombia are coming up. A friend of mine's heading down to do that. It's also had people opening up gateways out in Sweden, South Africa, the Netherlands, the UK, all over, again, the United States. And what's going on in November is there's an influx or a wave coming through. And for those of you who are opening gateways or you have gateways opened or primary grids in your home, like I do, or maybe you're thinking of getting started, November is going to be bringing in a lot of fresh energy, clean energy. November is going to be more of a wash in terms of purging and clearing old structures. There's so much activity going on in the sign of Taurus, especially for the 1111 and November 12th. So the 1111 and the 1112, because we are moving through an interesting push. There's a, a dissolving of a structure that is keeping a lot of the collective in a loop right now. And you may be feeling this yourself. There's a dissolving of a lot of energy forms, thought forms, and structures kept in place to kind of keep things in a cyclical fashion. And however those structures came about, it, it can actually be quite diverse. A lot of people might think that it's all a big control mechanism and some of it some of it was some of it was but also never forget that this can happen in neighborhoods this can happen in communities this can happen in cities and in countries so it's not always the same thing regardless meteor shower in the southern Taurids, and then we have a full moon in taurus 11 11 11 12 dissolving and clearing of a structure that is permitting such cycles, such loops and stagnancy to exist on the planet. These gateways themselves will be very, very active during this time, whether you are actively working with it or you are not actively working with it. So prepare yourself. It's going to be like a worldwide road opener <laughs> for a lot of people. If you are interested in opening up a gateway, that is fabulous. Also, however, just keep in mind that you want to work with your gateway, right? You want to fire it up, charge it up, tap in, meditate with it, call in more of these higher energy frequencies, this higher source light intelligence, and anchor it again into the planet, connecting it into the core of the planet itself, allowing for more of that perceptual veil presence to dissipate and to be cleared. So we're working on doing a lot of purging of that right now. A lot of density has been getting removed from the planetary experience, especially through September and October. And if you really do look out over what's going on in the world right now, you're actually seeing a lot of running in circles. You can see running in circles going on in small groups, the microcosm. You can see running in circles in larger collective groups, the macrocosm. And it, it's, it's almost like nothing is permitted to move forward. And that a lot of that has to do with this sort of wall that's going on right now. And again, while we're going through this collective shift in consciousness, 
there's sort of this stop on everyone and everything trying to make things start over or, or resurrect from the past as far as collective structures and old paradigm structures are concerned. And when we talk about a full moon, culminations, clearings, endings, full power, transition, and we have a meteor shower, which meteor showers always bring fresh energy. Path Watchers, we work with the meteors. We work with meteor showers. It's just pure, it's clean, it's bright. It's all about taking care of the t structure, right? Taurus is all about structure. It's all about patterns. And there's nothing wrong with structure unless there's an old structure. And we follow this movement and allow this to go through because in clearing the old structures, clearing perceptual veils, clearing lower energy forms and lower thought forms, and replacing it with the new paradigm, new earth experience, these higher vibrational energies, things are really going to start ramping up. You will also find that for those of you who are active manifestors, you're working on manifest manifesting, creating, and working on optimizing your experience with collective co-creation, that that gets easier for you during these periods. And it's always easier around a gateway or a grid link up, whether it's a path watcher one or it's something that's naturally occurring in a vortex, right? We have vortexes, sacred sites, or you're working along the crystalline grid or you're connected, however you're doing it. Manifestation is pretty easy to do around those areas. Creative work is pretty easy to do around those areas. And that time buffer is much, much more, well, it's not even much, much more anything. It's actually a whole lot more diminished. Let's just say it that way. The, the wait time on, on, on payoff or, or transition, it's almost instantaneous. And I think that what happens for a lot of people is that sometimes we forget to create. And so I'm trying to remind people to create your experience here. Don't open up a gateway and sit there with your hand out. Don't open your higher heart and sit there with your hand out. It is okay to open up a gateway and surrender to maybe a higher role. Maybe you want to surrender to your higher self, highest divine intelligence and be taken on an adventure. That's amazing, that's awesome, I'm doing that. But don't forget to also create during this period. One of the things that I would say you have to remember, though, is that we are doing creative work a little bit differently as these energies come in. It's not just about creating commodity style payoffs or, or, or manifesting commodities, focusing specifically on money or abundance. It's not taking it as far as it could actually go. While we want to actually still be very specific in what we're creating, right? We don't want to be too vague or too general. See the Emerald Tablet videos for more info on that. We want to have pure intention. Pure intention is ideal. Well, it's actually crucial. We are creating entire experiences and entire timelines at this point. Take, for instance, a person who wants to maybe manifest a new place to live it would serve them very well to do more than just focus on a house or focus on the cost, but maybe actually focus on the life experiences that would occur in such a space, in and around that space. Not trying to manifest them specifically, but to again, create the experience and the feeling, again, generating the opportunity for that timeline, for that story to unfold in their life. And on and after the November 11th and the 12th, it's going to be a lot easier for people who are working these gate systems and opening up these gates in, the, in, in their vicinity and in their communities, again, going out. It's going to be a lot easier for that kind of stuff to transpire. Be careful during this time. You will, however, notice that there are some people having some adverse reactions to change. And sometimes even there's some spiritual activity in a few days following. And a lot of that has to do with a shock. And it's not necessarily meant to be like a shock to the system in terms of judgment or anything like that. But when a person wakes up or a person starts to have this influx of higher energy, 
sometimes what can happen is is that it's almost like it's happening too fast sometimes good things can happen too fast and so there can sometimes be a feeling of stress or anxiety that comes to you or maybe comes in your in your group or whatever because again we have a lot of very positive outcomes starting to take shape if you're doing the creative work all at the same time and change can be stressful even if it's could change however again roll with it some people may if they find themselves grieving the loss of the feeling of shelter when it comes to these old structures in the first place because again it's sort of we're getting rid of the road map we're getting rid of the control system we're getting rid of the of the tunnel right we're getting rid of the tunnel that we were trapped in forced to only go down one or two directions and so it's going to feel very weird it's going to feel a little exposed fill that vacancy with your own creation we also have november 16th and 17th another meteor shower moving through the taurus sign in this case the northern taurids so we have meteors just clearing through that right now and with that energy that beautiful influx there it's time to start thinking about bridge work and for people who've already gotten ahead of me and started doing bridge work good bridge work is where you actually not only call in the higher energies from source these cosmic energies from all over the cosmos and higher dimensions but you're actually calling energy up from the spiritual core the spiritual center the spiritual divine spark in the core of the planet and calling energy up from the planet itself and actually connecting it into those higher energies into source into the higher dimensions so you're creating a two-way bridge and what happens with that bridge work is that we end up actually having this not necessarily structure but let's say structure for lack of a better word we have this permanent space this permanent field of energy which is now holding the space of the new the new paradigm in a raw form allowing for more of that energy to not only to come in but also at the same time to continuously dissolve dissolve and dissipate lower reality experiences lower energy forms lower thought forms and also to assist in, for people as well as spiritual non-physical entities to actually adjust to this rapid acceleration in the shift a lot more easily now if you wish to do bridge work now that's fine you don't have to wait till the 16th or 17th and for goodness sake please don't stop after the 16th and 17th you can actually do this through your own grids you can actually do this through your own gateways I'm actually doing it through the primary great gateway I have in my home and you don't have to run out to all the places you planted stones just again send that energy out in all directions creating that bridge and you're going to find that as the bridge work goes a lot of very interesting occurrences sort of come back to you and start to materialize again very very quickly things that are not only trying to come to you but things that are helping you get back on the track of your spiritual journey and your spiritual evolution helping you to get back on track and also move forward accelerating spaces in your life that have maybe even gone too slow or reversed and so this is ultimately a really really kick-ass month even though there's a mercury retrograde now I do want to touch on that really quickly though and it's not going to be having the kind of impact that where it's going to make things go wrong or anything like that it's not a textbook mercury retrograde think about mercury retrograde in Scorpio Scorpio is the sign of transition it could be the sign of secrets it could be the sign of death and alteration uh, and when we have mercury retrograde there in a lot of cases a lot of things come back for review or even renewal so how do we get rid of the unhealthy cycles and bring back old chances or maybe renew sides of ourselves 
parts of ourselves, parts of our spiritual makeup, gosh, it's almost like a collective soul retrieval opportunity. Do not worry about Mercury retrograde. This is ultimately what November is going to be all about. However, I did also want to make a point of sharing a bit what's going on in my personal journey and, and maybe also extend a bit of an invitation to everybody else out there doing this work. There has been so much going on in soul group movements, soul group connections going on. And we're talking about things on an oversoul level. We talk about oversouls. Remember, oversoul groups are huge. They're about the size of a medium-sized town. And I'm going to say, over the course of the last month and a half, I just want to give a shout out to my brothers and my sisters who have shown up that are ultimately, damn right, you're part of my soul family. And it's just so crazy to to start having these connections. And then again, they are even validated by astrology. And there's one guy, my son's conjunct his descendant, and another guy, his de it, my, my descendant is conjunct his son. And then there's another guy who's got, uh, you know, North Node connections, all, all kinds of really interesting sort of like, yeah, past life, multi-incarnation, you know, connections opening up. Thank you for showing up, guys, because I really think, again, teams are coming together right now. A lot of you who are doing this work, and even if, again, you're just stepping in right now and you want to try it because you saw this video, Again, check out the Gateway video, check out the Higher Heart video, catch yourself up on all of the intel with the last few videos on Pathwatcher work. When you're working on your grid, when you're connecting to your higher self, yeah, Rambo's snoring again. When you're connecting to higher self, when you're connecting to, again, your support teams, your angelic support team, your elemental support team, your ancestral support team, your galactic support team, or whatever higher levels and aspects you are and work with, do not forget to include your oversoul. Connecting to your oversoul group. Ask to be connected to your oversoul group. Ask to be, you know, brought in contact with those people. And you'll notice not only that you're getting oversoul connections in the realm of spirit, non-physical. I've been getting visitations from somebody who's a part of my, my two people who are part of my oversoul group that are not in the physical. And it's kind of neat. And again, Six or seven people just popped up in the last month. Some people I was well aware I had tight connections to, even though we had never actually had the chance to, to speak. Finally, those doors are open. And some folks that I've just met that I've been doing readings for or just kind of looked me up out of the blue, it's amazing. And it's there. That connection is really, really powerful. And for those of you who are maybe thinking about things like soulmates and twin flames and whatnot. Yes, this is absolutely the group where you find those people. Your, your soulmate, your twin flame, all of that. That's a part of the oversoul group experience. But I strongly suggest you suspend that search and see what it feels like to actually connect to people you have that connection to first. Have those oversoul contact meetings first the, the the calls the messages calling the people into your life because they're calling for you too you want to feel that soul connection that soul bond this is how it goes and i you'd be surprised how crazy similar and how crazy cool and just how crazy intimate even first time meetings texts skypes uh, Zooms, whatever, whatever mediums you're using to meet each other can actually be. And I, I just, I, I am so blown away by it. And I would absolutely love to hear more from people who are doing that themselves. Because, you know, again, you're, you're connected to a lot of beings out there. And some of them have physical incarnations on this planet. Some of them don't. But if you are interested in, again, working on your group, building your group up, doing this bridge work, might be wise to con you know consider having those connections even if they're long distance even if it's long distance for now or it's long distance for however long it's definitely something that's going to be helping you work on your mojo because you're going to be waking each other up you're going to be not only just 
you know, pushing each other along, but really, I mean, you react to each other. Your energies react to each other. And it's very, very powerful and it's very intimate. It goes right down beyond, you know, just, just beyond the layers of the aura you might think. And it's, it's such a cool experience. So, and again, there's nothing to it. There's nothing to it. If you want to just simply, again, whether you're working your gateways, you're working your, 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 you're connecting to the grid and then, yeah, you're lighting a candle and just saying, I'm surrendering this or I, I call in, you know, spirit, higher self, oversoul, bring me my, bring me an oversoul friend, bring me some of my oversoul family, bring in those people, you know, just, just watch what happens. It's crazy. Anyway, I guess we got a little bit off track. I do need to wrap this up for you all, but I'd be very interested in seeing what is going on for everyone else out there. Don't forget to tap into your grids regularly. Don't forget to tap into your, your gateways regularly. A lot of people, again, don't set it and forget it. And don't try and send your intentions to manifest things through the grid itself. It's not going to work. Um, and I'm not saying this to call, somebody's going to be watching this. And, and, and I hope you know I'm not talking about you, dear. But some folks have been like, this isn't working. I t created a gateway and I wanted to do a thing and it's not nothing's manifesting and it's like no you 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 again like i said in part three you're just it's it that would be like throwing a book into the sun you you this is to help you create outside of the grid okay once you create your gateway then go do your crystal grid then go do your manifestation exercise then go do your ceremony then go do your spell whatever but don't try and and, and push it into this this is this energy is pure it's it's not going to be pilfered or, or bent in in or or filtered into another experience that's where we're just make it's think of it as almost like a generator or a power booster for your other works when you're working them okay and again tap in tap in call that energy in do the bridge work you don't have to make anything new just use what you already have bridge it and connect it in and see it get easier see it get easier all of your work this is really really powerful stuff going on you guys so anyway thank you so much for tuning in i can't wait to come back and talk a little bit more about probably yeah soul groups over soul groups spiritual teams all kinds of good stuff like that but i want to get this up as well so people are up to date and alert because 11 11 and 11 12 are coming and i can't wait y'all take care and i will see you again soon